Good morning and welcome. Good morning. Today we're going to celebrate the second Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, Bernil was supposed to be standing here looking at those smiling faces this morning. However, found out, I think it was about Thursday, that Lee Kenny's daughter, uh, uh, Megan, uh, was tested positive for COVID. She was exposed, so out of an abundance of caution, she said, I probably shouldn't do that, so that's why I'm here, smiling back at you. Happy Father's Day to you fathers out there. Happy Juneteenth as well. With that, why don't we begin our service? Now I behold Jesus Christ.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess, confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. Therefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O oh, oh, most merciful God, God who has given you your only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy upon us, and for his sake grant us remission of all our sins. And by your Holy Spirit, increase in us true knowledge of you and your will and true obedience to your word, to the end that by your grace we may come to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and has given his only Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe on his name, he gives power to become the children of God and has promised them his Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all.
Let us pray. Oh God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as, as surpass our understanding. Cast out all sin and evil's desires from us and pour into our hearts your Holy Spirit to guide us into all blessedness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our reader today is uh, Deb Freeman. Thank you. Morning. <clears throat> the Old Testament reading is found in Isaiah chapter 65, verses 1 through 9. I was ready to be sought by those who did not ask for me. I was ready to be found by those who did not seek me. I said, here am I, here am I, to a nation that was not called by my name. I spread out my hands all the day to a rebellious people who walk in a way that is not good, following their own devices. A people who provoke me to my face continually, sacrificing in gardens and making offerings on bricks, who sit in tombs and spend the night in secret places, who eat pig's flesh and broth of tainted meat is in their vessels, who say, keep to yourself, do not come near me, for I am too holy for you. These are a smoke in my nostrils, a fire that burns all the day. Behold, it is written before me, I will not keep silent, but I will repay. I will indeed repay into their bosom both your iniquities and your father's iniquities together, says the Lord, because they made offerings on the mountains and insulted me on the hills. I will measure into their bosom payment for their former deeds. Thus says the Lord, as the new wine is found in the cluster, and they say, do not destroy it, for there is a blessing in it. So I will do for my servant's sake and not destroy them all. I will bring forth offspring from Jacob and from Judah, possessors of my mountains. My chosen shall possess it, and my servants shall dwell there. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The epistle is found in Galatians chapter 3, verse 23, through chapter 4, verse 7. Now before faith came, we were held captive under the law, imprisoned until the coming faith would be revealed. So then the law was our guardian until Christ came, in order that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer under a guardian. For in Christ Jesus you are all sons of God through faith. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to promise. I mean that the heir, as long as he is a child, is no different from a slave, though he is the owner of everything, but he is under guardians and managers until the date set by his father. In the same way, we also, when we were children, were enslaved to the elementary principles of the world. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Then they sailed to the country of Gerasenes, which is opposite of Galilee. When Jesus had stepped out on land, there met him a man from the city who had demons. For a long time he had worn no clothes, and he had not lived in a house but among the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him and said with a loud voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? I beg you, do not torment me. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many a time it had seized him. <clears throat> he was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles. But he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the desert. Jesus then asked him, What is your name? <clears throat> and he said, Legion. For many demons had entered him. And they begged him not to command them to depart into the abyss. And now a large herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside, and they begged him to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the pigs. And the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and were drowned. <clears throat> now when the herdsmen saw what had happened, they fled and told it into the city and into the country. Then people went out to see what had happened, and they came to Jesus and found the man from whom the demons had gone, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. <clears throat> and those who had seen it told them how the demon-possessed man had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked him to depart from them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. And he went away, proclaiming throughout the whole city how much Jesus had done for him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you. Please join me as we confess with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand. God, the Father Almighty, and from the next he will come to judge 
The sermon for this second Sunday after Pentecost is prepared by Lee Kinney and follows Luke 8, 26th verse. Now today's gospel demonstrates Jesus' power over demons. This part of the teaching of the Bible that Jesus is God and therefore has power over everything. In past Gospels, we have heard that Jesus has power over sickness, injury, over the weather, and even over death. Now, today's account of Jesus driving out the demons is another demonstration of his power over all things. Now, Jesus and his disciples crossed the Sea of Galilee into an area that was more heavily populated with Gentiles. No sooner did they set foot on the shore than a demon-possessed man challenged them. Now, this particular demon possession was pretty spectacular. The man lived among the dead. He wore no clothes, and the locals were unable to restrain him even with chains. Now, Jesus showed his power over the demons and over this man by conversing with them. Although the demons were the sworn enemies of God, they were obliged to answer his questions. They had no choice. Their answer indicates the strength of the evil forces in this man. A legion, which was this man's name, was an army force numbering in the thousands, which means this man was literally possessed by thousands of demons. Nevertheless, it would have made no difference if there had been a billion in this man. For Jesus is Lord over all, and even the demons must obey him. Now, when the Lord commanded them to leave, they had no choice but to leave. The only question was where to go. The demons asked Jesus to inhabit a nearby herd of pigs. Even then, they needed Jesus' permission. And Jesus obliged them. So the demons, demons entered the pigs, and the pigs promptly stampeded into the lake and drowned. Now, the Bible does not tell us what happened to the demons after the, the pigs drowned, but I digress. Now, the swineherds had a totally predictable response to the situation. They fled into a nearby city for backup. When the people heard the news, they went out to check on Jesus. The scene gives us more insight into the difference between people who are saved and the people who are still demon-possessed. <clears throat> the man who was now saved was sitting at Jesus' feet. This is a figure of speech that meant he was listening as Jesus was teaching. Now, the round trip to the city probably took a few hours, so the man who was now free of demons had several hours of which I guess what you could call Bible class with Jesus. He could, could not, he could not get enough of Jesus. He wanted to go with him when he returned across the lake. On the other hand, the people were terrified of Jesus. They asked him to leave. They were polite about it, but they still saw Jesus as a problem and not as a savior. Now Jesus complied with the people's wishes. He left, but he left the missionary behind. The man who was now demon-free wanted to go with Jesus, but Jesus sent him away saying, return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. Now, when Jesus arrived, the man was full of demons. But now when Jesus is leaving, this man was a missionary to the people on the east side of the Sea of Galilee. Now, whenever the topic of demons comes up, our imaginations tend to go into overdrive. The culture we live in has come up with all kinds of speculations about demons, and most of them are pretty wrong. The Bible teaches us that demons were once angels. God created them sometime during the six days of creation, along with all the other angels. Soon after the creation, a group of angels rebelled against God. God immediately condemned these angels to an eternity of punishment. 
Now, the Bible tells us that God created hell specifically for these evil, rebellious angels, unclean spirits, evil spirits, demons, and so forth. Now, since demons are, in actuality, angels, they are spiritual beings. That is, they do not have physical bodies. They are not subject to the laws of the physical universe. Since demons are fallen angels, they are enemies of God. Now, the problem with being an enemy of God is, well, you're up against God. God is all-knowing, all-powerful, unlimited by time and space, and so forth. Even though the demons are fallen, they are still God's creatures. They cannot win against God in a direct attack or confrontation. They must find some other way to express their hatred of God. The battlefield in their war against God is the human race, us. Now, the demon's main weapon is deception. As Jesus said in John 8, when the devil lies, he speaks out of his own character, for he is a liar and the father of all lies. It wouldn't be much of a temptation if the devil appeared to us dressed in red body armor with horns and a pitchfork and smelled like smoke. Demons present, instead, temptations in ways that make sense. Ways that seem like the right thing to do. Ways that have a certain beauty. As the Apostle Paul wrote in his second letter to the Corinthians, even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. Now in Eden, the devil used a serpent to tempt Eve to eat of the forbidden, forbidden fruit. And mankind fell to that temptation. From that time on, Every human being inherits a sinful nature at conception, as the Holy Spirit inspired David to write in Psalms. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Now the Holy Spirit inspired Paul to write in his letter to the Romans, The mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law, indeed it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Now, the rite of baptism in the Lutheran service book states, the word of God also teaches that we are all conceived and born sinful and are under the power of the devil until Christ claims us as his own. We will be lost forever unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. Because we humans pass our sinful nature down from generation to generation, demon possession is our natural state. We are by nature sinful and unclean. Instead of loving God with all our mind, soul, and strength, we instead love ourselves. Now every human being by nature is terrified of God. We resist Him. We fear Him. Our lives apart from God show that we are a rebellious people who walk in a way that is not good and following our own devices. Now, the devil's control over us at birth may not be as spectacular as the man in today's gospel, but we all enter this world at odds with God and slaves to sin. Since demons deal in deception, they adapt their lives to the culture of any given time and place. Such as today, science and rationalism has had a profound effect on our culture. Many in our culture don't even believe demons exist. And in fact, that suits the demons just fine. It doesn't bother them one bit that we don't believe in them. Demons don't care if the crime rate goes down. They don't care if charitable donations go up. They don't care if people give each other a helping hand even. They don't care if there is a cure for every disease. They don't care if we are one great, big, happy family. As long as we are one great, big, happy family on the broad road to hell. The demons don't even care if there are churches on every corner as long as the churches don't talk about sin and its punishment or Jesus and his salvation. 
The demons don't even care if we talk about God, as long as that God is not the God who took on human flesh and died for our salvation. The demons don't even care if we talk about Jesus, as long as that Jesus is just a great example, or just a great moral teacher, or just a great liberator, or just a great unifier. The only God, the only Jesus that the devil hates is the Jesus who died on the cross for the forgiveness of sins and then rose from the dead in order to certify his victory over sin, death, and the devil. Now, there is only one person who defeated the devil, and that person is Jesus Christ, <clears throat> crucified for the forgiveness of all sins and raised from the dead. That person, and that person alone, is the only person who endured every temptation that the devil could throw his way and yet never sin. That person, and that person alone, endured the forsakenness of hell for us. As he died on a cross for our sins, Jesus Christ, crucified for the forgiveness of all sins and raised from the dead, the only person to defeat the devil, that same Jesus Christ offers his victory to us. Now, demons don't always identify themselves by driving pigs into a lake. Sometimes they inhabit people who look like grandmas and grandpas. They inhabit people who look respectable to the outside and sometimes and often seem very nice. Just like dangerous strangers tempt children with candy, demon-possessed people tempt us with all the things we like. It is their goal to make us very comfortable and even righteous while traveling the path to hell. The real lesson that we can take away from today's gospel is that Jesus is the one who exposes demons and deals with them. The same Jesus Christ who demonstrated his power over demons in today's gospel has defeated the devil once and for all on the cross. Trust in him. Trust in his holy life, his innocent suffering and death, his resurrection from the dead and his ascension into heaven. He is the only one who can protect you from the attacks of the devil. He is the only one who can give you life everlasting. Trust in Christ crucified and risen from the dead, and pray that the Holy Spirit will work that saving faith in all people. The peace of God, which fashions all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of, of God in Christ Jesus and for all according to their needs. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the nations of the earth, that civil leaders would repent of the rebellion against God's will and perform justice by defending the weak and punishing the guilty, that the church may have free course to preach the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have For the church, that like, all, that, that like the man formerly possessed by demons, she shall boldly proclaim how much Jesus has done for her, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have For earthly fathers, that our Father, from whom all fatherhood is named, would give them confidence 
in their station and zeal for their tasks, that he would make them examples of their children of godly life and love his word, that he would bless their work and to bring up children in the fear and instruction of the Lord, and that he would give them the comfort of his absolution over all their shortcomings. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the nations and those who govern them, for our own country and leaders, for our cities and communities, for good laws and faithful citizens, and for the, co the common welfare, welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord we especially pray this day for Steve and Connie Dean, for Chloe Hunt, Alan Paggy, Devin Chapman, Jim Sims, Travis Perrott, Lynn Moss, Kent Parker, for Nancy Lawson, and also a prayer of cons consolation for the Lawsons as Nancy lost her sister earlier this week in death in Chicago. For Dan Jones, for Jerry Heap, Carol McGuire, for Don Akins, Allison Renth, and continued healing for Chrissy Patterson, and for, uh, for comfort for those who, who knew, loved, and cared for Mary Margaret Schaefer, who was called home Wednesday morning. We also pray this day for Nathan Davis, He's in the critical care unit at Huntsville, Maine. He's the son of Kathy and Jim Kay with severe lung issues. We also pray for Robert Akins. He spent the day in the ER at Huntsville, Maine with symptoms of TIA. For Walter Cowart, also at Huntsville, Maine, for consolation with his family regarding hospice. For Bob Hirschbuehler, who's suffering from COVID-19. Also for Megan, the daughter of Lee Kenny, recovering from COVID. For Suzanne Gearing, as she has need to, as she had need this morning to go to the ER, and all and all who have requested prayer that Jesus would attend to the afflictions that, that beset them, as He pitied the, the man afflicted with the abundance of demons. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For all, dear Father, you know the condition of our souls that we frequently wander in, into sins vice and danger, hear our prayers for the sacred Christ who defeated legions of demons so that we might receive adoption as sons through the same Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Grant that we may gladly hear your word proclaimed among us and, fo and follow its directing. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Bless we the Lord. bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Life bestowing. 